Well, as I've said many times, you never know what's going to happen in this deal of the century and what's going on behind the scenes. But here's one thing that I don't doubt is the case. In fact, I'd have been shocked if it wasn't taking place. It says in the Jerusalem Post and others, other uh, news sources I report in as well that Saudi Arabia has offered uh, Mr. Abbas $10 billion, that's a billion dollars over 10 years, to accept Trump's peace plan. And here's a little bit of what the article says. It says, at the stage, according to the newspaper, the Saudi crown prince asked Abbas, how much money does the Palestinian Authority and its ministers and employees need? And that's speaking to uh, the amount of the payout. And he said that Abbas replied that the Palestinians need $1 billion each year, the report said. And uh, the crown prince uh, replied that uh, he would give $10 billion over 10 years if He accepted the deal of the century. But according to the report, it says Abbas, however, rejected the offer and said it would mean the end of my political life, the uh, report added. And he probably should have also added at the same time it would have been the the end probably of his life. It's been reported many times that Abbas, the only reason why he doesn't accept and has not accepted any deals over the uh, uh, lifetime of these peace proposals is because it is believed throughout the Arab world that if he did, he would be killed. And probably in the same way that Anwar Sadat, remember him from Egypt, he used to be the ruler that uh, signed the peace accord with Israel and ended up being assassinated when he was uh, overlooking a parade. And certainly you have to believe that uh, inside his own regime, they were planning his assassination. And I'm sure that's the way it would be with the boss as well. He can carry this on and probably get hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions anyway, just by holding on to power as long as he can. I mean, you can bet that the uh, Fatah regime is about as corrupt as uh, any out there. So if given the choice to live in luxury for the rest of his life and keep this peace proposal hoax going on as long as he can or until he dies, why in the world would he do anything else? I must face it, Mr. Abbas is a very wealthy man, and that's not going to change just because he accepts or rejects a peace proposal that's given or a bribe that is given by the Saudi crown prince. So it's likely a month to two months uh, before the expected deal of the century is rolled out, and of course there could be other delays. Mr. Abbas seems pretty emboldened to stay with the status quo, even up to the deadline of the uh, revelation of the deal of the century. But we have to remember scripture does say at some point in time, there will be some type of peace proposal that will bring about a peace with many. Now, whether or not it will be, uh, the Palestinians will be a part of it is unknown at this time, but uh, you know, I always believe that they would. In fact, I believe that there's seven years, that number alone um, probably indicates the time frame in which Israel is to give up the agreed upon uh, West Bank land and all the other swaps that will take place. And at the end, I believe that they will make uh, East Jerusalem uh, the um, capital of the Palestinian state. Now, frankly, I don't believe that day will ever come. I think that uh, God will stop that. And at the second coming of Christ, that will be put to an end. So frankly, I do not believe that uh, Israel will ever give up, physically give up, I should say, uh, East Jerusalem that may be in the agreement to some degree, but I don't think they'll ever give it up. And here's another article coming out of the Middle East Monitor. It says that Jordan rejects any change to status quo of Jerusalem. And one thing we know for sure is that there will be at some point in time a change in status quo as far as Jerusalem is concerned. Or should I be more specific, actually, there'll be a, a change of status for the holy sites and the Temple Mount. And you only need to go to Revelation chapter 11, verse 1 and 2 to determine that. It says, And there were, was given to me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood saying, Arise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship there. In other words, it's talking about a time when Israel will have a temple in which they will be able to worship. But going on to verse 2, it says, But the court which is without the temple leave out and measure it not. For it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they, shall they tread under foot forty and two months. Now, one reason why I don't believe that the temple will eventually be rebuilt on uh, Israeli land 
is what is stated in verse 2. It says, But the court which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles. You know, it's always been believed that at some point in time, the Temple Mount would be segregated, in which parts of it would be given to the Gentiles, and part of it would be given to Israelis to build their temple. But verse 2 seems to clearly state that the temple would be rebuilt in an area in which the Gentiles would have some type of rule over, and that leads me to believe that it will be rebuilt on the Temple Mount. Whereas some are saying that when the temple is rebuilt, I've heard others say that uh, they believe it will be rebuilt on some other part of Israel's or part of Jerusalem on the Israeli side. But that would not allow this verse to be held true where it says measure, measure it not talking about the outer court of the temple that is yet to be built because that was going to be given to the Gentiles. So it leads me to believe that yes, the temple will be rebuilt and in some capacity it will be built on a portion of the Temple Mount and that the Gentiles or other nations would also have access to this outer court and it's unknown how much of the uh, Temple Mount they would possess. But this leads me to believe that they would possess some uh, parts of the Temple Mount. Now switching gears back to the peace process, uh, here's another article by the Middle East Monitor. And I found this to be interesting. It says that Israel media deal of the century will topple Hamas. And I'm going to read a little from the article. It says the U.S. deal, a peace deal known as the deal of the century includes a plan to overthrow the Hamas government in the occupied Gaza Strip. And the only thing I want to point out is this right here is that it just seems strange to me that something that has gotten so much publicity and has the predominant title of the deal of the century is just going to be announced and fizzle and burn you know going back decades i have never known of any deal especially of this magnitude that's ever been known with the title of deal of the century usually the two sides just come together and after a couple months of bickering one or both of the parties just seem to walk away and that's it And we've had that several several times down the years But here we are years into this deal of the century and it's still being very much anticipated and entitled the deal of the century. And there's so much going on behind the scenes that we simply don't know. We only catch rumors that even though scripture indicates that it would be a Roman leader or someone out of the European Union that would ultimately make this deal work, you just can't walk away and say this can't be the deal or this can't play any part. You have to give it some seriousness, especially since all this money is being bantered about. We're talking about $10, million, $10 billion bribes just for saying yes, not counting all the economic and infrastructure uh, cash that's being thrown at them. And here's one more thing. It says the U.S. peace deal, known as the deal of the century, includes a plan to overthrow the Hamas government in the occupied Gaza Strip. The U.S. will assist the Palestinian Authority to regain control over Gaza, the newspaper said. It pointed out that its predictions were based on a recent article published on the New York, uh, on the New York Times by the U.S. envoy to the Middle East, Jason Greenblatt, in which he attacked Hamas and called for international intervention. If you care about Gaza, then blame Hamas, which is responsible for the Strip's poor economic conditions, Greenblatt said. On April 23rd, uh, senior U.S. presidential advisor Jared Kushner said that the American peace proposal would be unveiled after the Muslim month of fasting, which ends in early June. We're going to wait until after Ramadan now, he said. Kushner stressed that the deal was not an effort to impose U.S. will on the region, which he's talking about the Middle East. But I have to believe that there's going to be some hidden and soft power that is going to be exerted and has been uh, exerted by not only the United States, but also some of their Arab partners, such as Saudi Arabia. I have to believe that uh, all of President Trump's advisors would deny that they would attempt to overthrow the Gaza Strip. But I have to believe that that would go a long ways toward convincing Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas to uh, get on board with his peace proposal. But I definitely have to see what the details are going to be in, in which they would be able to overthrow Hamas because it would it would likely take a massive military intervention in order for that to happen. And frankly, I don't know if it would be nothing more than the United States just allowing Israel to go in and take the Gaza Strip and run Hamas out of town and for, this, and for doing so that Israel gets uh, 
financially rewarded by the United States? Or will it be a uh, joint task in which the United States uh, provides air power? Some of the other nations, such as Saudi Arabia and Egypt, participate in some way of either making a deal in which Hamas uh, walks away from the Gaza Strip before any type of massive military power is bestowed upon them. But let's just look at what would be the case if, in fact, that Hamas was driven from the uh, Gaza Strip, a narrow land uh, base is given to the Palestinians to connect uh, the um, West Bank Palestinian state with the Gaza Strip, allow uh, East Jerusalem to become their capital, and Mr. Abbas become the full-fledged leader of both regions. And certainly I would have to believe that he would have to have some uh, serious security from Egypt and Saudi Arabia and Israel and possibly the United States to make, uh, make sure that uh, Mr. Abbas and his uh, government is not overthrown in the coming, uh, coming months and years. So these are definitely all possibilities of what could come from this plan. And, you know, with all this being said, I have to believe that it's not going to get any better. If Mr. Abbas does not take this deal, I think he'd be very foolish. He's getting massive amounts of money for infrastructure and employment opportunities. He has a $10 billion bribe on the table. I don't know if that's just for him or, for, or it's going to be split up or whatever the case may be. But he could become a exceedingly wealthy man, which again, I, you know, I believe he's already exceedingly wealthy. But it just seems that there's a tremendous amount of goodwill and cash and other amenities, we'll call it, and possibly, I'm sure, status on the world and international stage. I have to believe that the minute he agrees to all of this, that the Palestinian Authority would be immediately entered into as a member state of the United Nations. And certainly there would be other high-powered uh, financial instruments that he would be able to play, uh, be a part of and also reap the benefits of. It almost sounds like he's been given an unlimited credit card to go anywhere in the world, spend as much money as he wants, and be accountable for none of it, but only if he agrees to the deal of the century. So in a nutshell, I just can't hardly believe that Mr. Boss would not take the opportunity to finally be rid of his uh, real foe in... Uh, the region, which is Hamas, and their leadership, receive a multi-billion dollar infrastructure deal and be paid handsomely for just doing it. And on top of that, become a world and international status symbol. And if it sounds like this is just too good to be true, I simply don't believe that it is. I think that all of these promises are within his reach and there are, the, there are people out there that are willing to make those payments come true. But again, we got another month or so to figure out and uh, see if he's actually going to do this. That's my report for today. If you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. You know, one day, I'm going to say this for the last time, the Lord is going to come back, rapture the church, and you're going to be stuck here to go through the most horrible time period the world has ever known, known as the tribulation period. And you know, worse than that, if you die without Christ, you're going to end up in a burning hell. You know, even now as we speak, uh, 150,000 people die every single day. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord. Allow Him to save you today. And you Christians, you need a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. Get it in the hands of every lost friend and loved one that you have. You know, there's two versions. One is the free version that you can download. Put on their device. It's written in nine different languages. There's also the paperback, which is written in English, that you can purchase. Hand it to them personally. And when the rapture does take place, if in fact they do not accept the Lord, this book will direct them and tell them what they need to do in order to possibly survive the tribulation period. Now certainly that's a tall order, but if, I, if there's a, one book that I believe can come close to that, it's this book. So I hope that you will make either the purchase and get this book in their hands or get it the free version. It's the same book, but I hope you'll make that decision to go and uh, get that in their hands. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.